The Far Cry series is well known for its unique set of gameplay mechanics and features. With every new title added, there are more new ways to play brought to the table. The most recent releases are no exception. Far Cry 5 and New Dawn gave us a whole lot and changed the way we see certain elements of the game. In some ways for the better, in some for the worst. So join me today as we look at the good, the bad, and the ugly of Far Cry 5 and New Dawn's new feature list. Let's get ourselves started out with one of the good features added. Far Cry 5 brought us a new melee weapon system that is probably one of the most fun weapon systems ever put in any video game ever. One of those weapons in particular I'm sure you're all thinking of right now, and that was the shovel. The ability to throw the shovel like it's a javelin was an amazingly fun thing to do. It's so much fun, in fact, that people have liberated entire outposts. People have done entire playthroughs of the game with nothing but the shovel as their only weapon. And the shovel's pretty powerful. I mean, you can carry a whole bunch of them, and they're pretty much a guaranteed one hit against most of the enemies in the game. Not only did they add the shovel, but a bunch of other weapons that are still really fun to use. Combined with the takedown system that was already in Far Cry, they enhanced the hand-to-hand -hand combat side of the Far Cry gameplay so much that it really is a viable option for your player to just do a melee build. And that's pretty impressive. Next up, it's time to mix in a little bit of the bad side of things. And that was the weapon level system from Far Cry New Dawn. It simply just hindered the weapon system so much. And for those of you that have played the game for any significant amount of time, you understand that the weapons you use are such an important part of your gameplay experience. And New Dawn ruined that in some ways by not allowing us to modify different guns to our liking and also by creating tiers where certain guns as you played the game and you went along would become basically unusable. By the time you got up to the third act of the game where you could unlock legendary weapons, everything else just paled in comparison and especially once you start adding upgrades to those weapons. Now luckily you could upgrade some of the lower level weapons up to the level of the legendary weapons, but still that took a lot of time and a lot of effort that it just simply shouldn't have. You look at all the other Far Cry games and you see that the weapon you get in the beginning of the game is a viable weapon all the way to the end of the game. Far Cry 5 is a perfect example of this. The first two guns you get are the 1911 and the ARC. And you really could use those two guns all the way through your entire playthrough. Not only that, you could go to the store and you could customize those weapons to your liking with sighting systems, extended mags, suppressors, and doing this allowed the player to control their play style even more. And in a game like Far Cry, the player picking their play style means so much to the gameplay experience. Now, this next one is sort of in my own opinion. In my own opinion, I think one of the best things ever added to Far Cry was the prepper stashes or the treasure hunts, depending on which game we're talking about. These missions were some of the best missions because they combined small little fun puzzles that could be done without a lot of effort, but still took a little bit of thinking to get done in most instances. And they rewarded you with a lot of good gear and money, and most importantly, perk points to make yourself even stronger. I just really enjoyed them. I know some players probably didn't think they were all that fun, but for me, I thought they were a great addition to the game, and I hope to see them return in Far Cry 6. Now let's keep things going on a positive note with Outpost Scavenging. This addition to New Dawn is, in my opinion, the best way to redo an outpost. Far Cry has always allowed us to reset all the outposts because the outposts are a huge part of the franchise and a lot of people can have hours and hours and hours of fun replaying the same outpost but trying all sorts of different tactics and seeing if they can get away with them. Scavenging outposts was by far the best way 
to let an enemy take back over an outpost. Before, simply you would have to complete all the outposts and then reset them all and you would gain nothing for it. Scavenging allowed you to reset only the outpost you wanted to play and not only that, you got a reward for doing it. And that really made the game a lot of fun. Not only that, every time you scavenge it, it got harder so that you didn't really get bored of the same old enemies every single time. Some of these outposts got to a very high challenge level even on easier difficulties, and that really added a lot to the replayability of the outposts. And since we just talked about outposts, let's talk about Outpost 2.0, and that is Expeditions. By far, the greatest thing that New Dawn brought to the franchise was the Expeditions. It really was like the Outpost, but 10 times better huge new worlds to explore well not really worlds but maps let's call them to explore and very diverse maps at that with all sorts of cool environments it really was a whole lot of fun to play through all the expeditions and there's something that to this day i still play through but expeditions were by far one of the best things ever added to far cry hands down all right, so let's talk about one more negative thing that New Dawn brought to the table. With all of the good it brought, it brought us enemy levels. We've already talked about weapon levels and how they made the game just less fun and less customizable. Enemy levels don't really work in the same way as making the game less customizable, but they do make it a lot less fun. Because again, we're talking about certain weapons becoming simply obsolete. Not only that, by the time you reach in-game, even the regular enemies kind of feel like bullet sponges unless you have really highly upgraded weapons. And that's not really fun. You don't want a super easy enemy at the in-game, but you also don't want bullet sponges, because bullet sponges, simply put, aren't fun. There's no real skill involved in dealing with a lot of bullet sponges. It's basically just point and pull the trigger a lot. It's really just a boring way to play the game. Enemy levels just should not come back ever, unless they're toned down a lot and their difficulty is not created by just having a high health pool, but maybe by actually being better enemies. Maybe they hit their shots more often or they're harder to hit because they're more dynamic in their movements. Those things actually can make the game fun. Creating bullet sponges does not. So now I'm sure you've all been wondering, what was that title about? The worst thing ever added to Far Cry? Well, now's the time to talk about that. In my honest opinion, one of the worst features ever added to Far Cry was Prosperity, your home base in New Dawn. And not having a home base, because that's actually a pretty cool thing, having a safe place the player can go and test weapons and upgrade their gear is awesome. But locking all those upgrades behind a tedious amount of particular types of gameplay, not a lot of fun. And especially locking basic features like fast travel behind these walls to where the player can't fast travel to individual locations, for example, until almost halfway through the entire game. It was not a good feature. Now, some things on there make sense, like increasing the player's health as the game goes along. The enemies are getting tougher, so let's make the player tougher. Some people may like that, some people may not. A lot of things didn't make sense to put behind these doors that the player has to open. Especially like upgrading your guns for hire. Why should I have to increase my prosperity level, then go get more ethanol to increase my guns for hire, just to make them even usable? Because if your guns for hire are even one level below the enemies, good luck getting any of them to get a single kill. They suddenly just become useless. And until you get back there and get enough ethanol to upgrade them, they're useless. But there's all these other things you have to upgrade at the same time if you want to be a good player. And basically what this ends up doing is since every time you get into a new act of the game and you upgrade prosperity one level, it almost resets the player to this weaker level again. And this happens, of course, twice through the game. You start out and then there's two more times after that. And it's just not fun. It's not a fun, innovative way to allow the player to upgrade and get better at the game. So now we've come to the final item on the list. And I would be amiss to put the worst feature in this video without mentioning the best feature. 
And what was the best feature of the last two Far Cry games? Well, simply put, it was the guns for hire. There's no question, hands down, the guns for hire enhanced the gameplay experience so much. Having these specialized companions go along with you can really help fill in a player's play style. If you're not someone who enjoys stealthy gameplay, you can bring along a stealthy companion who you can use, who you can use when you need to take someone out stealthily. Or if you are a stealthy player, you can bring a bunch of stealthy companions and just be an unstoppable force. Far Cry, as I've mentioned before in this video, has always allowed the player to really determine their own play style. And the guns for hire really do add to that by giving the player somebody to bring along that helps fill in the gaps and make them a better player. Not only that, these are interesting people. I think everybody probably has their favorite gun for hire, and most of the time that probably isn't because of their gameplay attributes, but probably because of their snarky remarks or just the type of people they are, the character. It's fun to have these companions come along with you and not feel like you're alone in your journey. So by far, the best thing added to Far Cry in the last two games, 5 and New Dawn, is the guns for hire. And that is it for my list. What do you guys think? Did I get them right? Did I miss any feature that I should have mentioned, good or bad? Leave a comment, let me know what you think. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you could leave a like. And if you enjoy Far Cry content, I can't guarantee I'm the most regular uploader, but if you subscribe and turn on notifications, it'll make sure you never miss an upload from me. And when I do make a video, I try to make it the best I can. So once again, thank you guys for watching today's video. I really appreciate it and have an absolutely wonderful day.